Namaste. Welcome. For today, I'd like to talk about pranam, both its spiritual and energetic significance. Pranam is a salutation to God or to an individual whose divinity is manifested. So when we address someone pranam, we acknowledge that person has attained a high level of awakening or enlightenment. So that person has transcended to a higher plane of consciousness. Yeah. So that person is the instrument of God in this mortal existence. So we just don't say pranam to anyone. Yeah. It is a high yeah, salutation to the divine entity, God, or the representation of God, this mortal existence, someone who's um, achieved yeah, a level of enlightenment. All right. Energetically, prana means union or meeting, blending of two powerful forces we allow to unite inside our energetic system through the utilization of the energy law. And various methods, of energy channeling methods such as pranayama and meditation. All right, so the first force comes from the outside, we call the prana, the universal life force, yeah, that we allow to enter our bodies through breathing. So every time we inhale the gaseous oxygen, we allow this force yeah, to nourish us. Yeah, prana yeah, is the cause of our mortal existence. Yeah? Without prana, we die. Yeah, so our whole our mortal life depends on the prana. All right. The second force is the one we have inside our bodies, the one we produce yeah, as a byproduct of our autonomic functions. We call apana vayu, and this comes from the helps. All right. The prana has a downward, yeah, inward and downward nature. Yeah, so it enters our bodies. Yeah, so God descends. Yeah, so the grace of God descends. That's his nature. All right. And our own energy, the Apana value at first, has a downward and outward flow. Yeah, as it serves a function of our um, earthly uh, needs, such as procreation, physical strength. Yeah, so something which serves the lower functions of our existence. Yeah, but very important is the foundation. At first, predominantly, the apana vayu goes out of our bodies. We don't want to be holding too much of that because it could cause um, intense, um, uh, I would say, clinging yeah, to the pleasures of the body, the physical body. However, through regulating its flow, we could allow yeah, the subtle, the refined, and the filtered apana to rise. So our energy rises, and I've been talking about this principle yeah. many times already. Our consciousness rises, our energy rises. Yeah. So when we allow this upon a value, you know, the subtle, you know, refined form, you know, the absolute form of the upon a value, which we call the Kundalini energy, to rise, it meets the prana. So they blend and unite. Thus, pranam. Yeah, the blending or the union of these forces. And this unified force is allowed yeah, to enter through the Shushumna Nadi, the middle channel. Yeah, and together, yeah, the unified form, yeah, through the utilization of the energy locks and regulating the levels, pierces through the chakras of the astral system all right. and we have at least seven all right. chakras yeah and as the uh, forces as the unified force rises up yeah they yeah, open three important knots psychic knots of our astral system all right and these three knots are located yeah inside the three main compartments of our energetic system or our subtle astral system all right the first is located down the hips we call the brahma granti all right so the brahma granti granti means uh, spiritual knot yeah this knots are inherently close or blocked yeah, for a significant reason 
yeah because uh, generally you know this not um, uh, remain closed through the lifetime you know we don't need to open them yeah generally for most of us because as they open they will cause um, the subconscious mind to open up as well which in the first place for uh, general practitioner should never be done at all so these are deep uh, energetic practices which require uh, spiritual initiation from uh, a spiritual teacher uh, so these are sensitive um, techniques which combine uh, physical observances uh, of the mat observances um, as well as energetic practices of breath regulation so it's a holistic approach not just of the the techniques but what we do outside you know which is more important because as the subconscious mind open up yeah it will uh, yield to uh, many spiritual realizations that if the person is not ready prepared to accept and you know, these realizations and most of this could contradict that person's uh, belief system this could cause conflict yeah so before the grant he's or actually before the energy system is open up yeah see the spiritual initiation would have to be accomplished first and then that's what said yeah, so the the person is prepared yeah, to accept the realities and some of them could be quite harsh you know so when the person is prepared then opening the grantees and the rest of the energetic system is healthy all right now the brahma grantee located down the hips uh, once this open up yeah the uh kundalini will be able to pierce higher up the muladhara chakra yeah the base chakra and actually the the two yeah bottom chakras the muladhara and the shodhisthana chakra so yeah it opens up and it frees the kundalini freely without um uh, i say without struggle without forcing so the kundalini is gentle yeah so it doesn't irritate yeah our inner system so to speak yeah so it opens up freely when the brahma granti opens up all right and there are techniques yeah, for this to happen for example um you know combination of uh, asanas where we open the hips and at the same time not there are distinctive not all asana actually you know, there are distinctive asanas only you know, uh, choice asanas with um, the dysfunction most of them are hip openers as well as pranayama where we uh, energize the hips such as bastrika um, kapdabati yeah, um, those are the powerful uh, techniques a combination of the asana and the breath work which will allow the the bottom regions of the astral system to open up all right and the teacher yeah will give you the program all right so when the brahma Gandhi opens up all right we could allow you know, the unified force to blend there so at first there you know we need to uh, achieve and attain the uh, full potential of our physical body all right. and enjoy it this is very pleasurable for the physical body yeah, so this where you gain all the health benefits the physical health benefits the yeah, power strength foundation which is important yeah so to build a solid foundation is uh, essential you know, for us to withstand the rigors or the challenges of the higher functions all right so when we breathe in and there are methods for example um um Dinadi Shodana, alternate nostril breathing or the Bastrika. So those um, you know, pranayamas are very good at opening uh, the the lower regions of our Asa system. So we allow you know, the prana, the apana to rise and the prana to descend all the way down to our hips and then they blend there. So Bastrika is so powerful in doing this. So we inspire and allow this force you know, to enter the hips and then our own energy rises. They blend. The bellows breath. Yeah, that's why bellows breath is believed to uh, awaken the Kundalini yeah, so powerfully. But of course, there's an advanced breath regulation which requires guidance and progressive learning. All right. And Nadi Shodana. 
All right. Nandi Shodhana is actually good at you know opening the whole of our energetic system. It's the most powerful. Yeah, so it's there's there's nothing more powerful than the Nandi Shodhana. Simple but so powerful. All right. So Nandi Shodhana Bastrika. And those for me are the most um, powerful ways yeah, to open up the Brahma Gandhi. And of course um the couple of body. <laughs> that one. To lightly yeah, loosen and ag agitate yeah, the forces, the force of the hips. And there are many forces inside the body. So, but I'm just um, focusing on the two ones, yeah, the prana and the apana bodies. All right. Now, yeah, when the, the, the bottom chakras of the spine finally open up, yeah, you will be able to lift yeah, the unified force higher up. Yeah, the Manipura chakra, yeah, higher up the Manipura chakra, yeah, and the Anahata chakra. So between here, yeah, the thoracic cavity, yeah, and this is where the second Granthi is located. We call the Vishnu Granthi. Yeah, so Vishnu Granthi is the most uh, beautiful place yeah, to unite the prana and the apana vayu. This promotes compassion. Anything that comes from the heart is beautiful, so to speak. Goodwill, welfare, understanding, respect, tolerance. Yes, it 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 brings about your good qualities. Yeah, so, and there is one powerful you know, technique of attaining this ujjayi. So the victorious breath because the victorious breath as we narrow the pathway of the throat behind we allow slowly the prana to enter and we don't you know, fully descend the prana down somehow we narrow the pathway so it only goes down to the chest and our apana slowly rises up so we narrow now the pathways so we filter the forces further and they unite inside the chest. I suppose, for example, the Bastrika, where the pathway is so open, <laughs> and predominantly you will feel the forces blend inside the hips and around the upper uh, core region. But the Ujjayi breath, you, know, you narrow the pathway. So your force, the Apana, coming from the bottom regions of the Asa system and the Prana, They blend here and it opens up the Anahata chakra, the heart chakra. Uh, Ujjayi breath is one powerful way you know, to open up the Vishnu Granthi, you know, the thoracic cavity. But of course, you have to open up the physical body through well, um, gentle back bends, um, forward bends, where we bow forward. Yeah, because when we bow forward, we narrow the pathway of the hips and we narrow the pathway of the throat region and you breathe through the ujjayi breath and back bends are good in opening up the chest but not the deep ones just the basic one maybe the strasana um, uh, the most complex you can do yeah and then shoulder openers too you know good to release uh, blockages around the thoracic region of our astral system all right and another Breath regulation, which is so helpful in attaining this purpose, is the the sitari, yeah, uh, pranayama, or the sitali, yeah, or the sitali, uh, pranayama, uh, the cooling breath. Because when we do that, as we allow the cooling breeze of the prana to enter the chest region, we suck or draw our own apana up and they blend here. That's why the shitali uh, pranayama, the shitali pranayama is so good in nourishing yeah, the Vishnu Granthi. All right. Now, yeah, when this part of you opens up, yeah, you will feel it. Yeah, like this is now where you realize uh the the start of uh the oneness yeah? um because when the heart opens up 
you see the good in everyone. You see the you see the good in everything. Right. So you understand uh, it, the persons or the when when you meet someone, and you will understand the different stages you know, they go through. Yeah, so it it might be different to yours, but uh, you understand because you've been there. Yeah, something like that. So um, you you promote better understanding and tolerance. Yeah, so it's not it's 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 about you know, uh, going through uh, different stages of spiritual awakening. Yeah, that that person might be going through uh, a certain stage. Yeah, you might have been there already, or that person has transcended already. You will understand already how 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 we develop as a spiritual individual. So there's no judgment. Uh, there's only understanding, respect, and support. Yeah, very beautiful place to uh, uh, allow the union to happen. All right. Now finally, yeah, when this one opens up, yeah, the unified force further rises up and then this unified force is even filtered and it becomes so subtle already yeah. and then we allow you know, the unified force of the Kundalini, the Apana and the Prana to blend inside the cranial region. Yeah. We call the Rudhagranti. Yeah. Rudhagranti yeah, is the element of subtle air yeah. and then subtle water. Yeah, where the soma is, the cerebral fluid, yeah, is waiting yeah, for the kundalini to blend inside your cranial cavity. Yeah, and the rudraganti is located on the sushumna, the, the top of the sushumna uh, nadi, the end point yeah, of the sushumna nadi here, inside, not literally the, the eyebrow center, inside yeah, the meeting point higher up the spine, located above the uh, medulla oblongata, yeah, higher up the pons, where the pineal gland, the pituitary glands are located. All right. So that's the Rudraganti, uh, where the union, the Samadhi happens. When the, the force of the Kundalini and the unified force of the Prana and the Kundalini uh, pierce through that point inside, yeah, and it meets the soma inside the brain, it's rare fluid, this will cause electrical reaction and it will awaken the inner brain. Yeah. Uh, consciousness, yeah. um, the seat of God inside. Yeah. And we achieve awakening or enlightenment. And this is where now we realize this is really no difference at all. So at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, it's just one. Yeah. So after this dies, after everything, ceases to exist, we become one at the end, yeah? and we transition to the next stage of our spiritual awakening. Yeah, everyone goes higher, yes, so it doesn't matter where you are, eventually you're going to get there. So that's one of the most beautiful realizations of Samadhi, All right. that this is just an instrument for us to transcend to the next higher level of spiritual awakening all right and this is where the samadhi happens inside all right and what uh, techniques uh, uh, could help us attain this yeah there's only one nadi shodhana right. nadi shodhana is the most powerful of all it pierces through the three grantis from the base of the hips to the chest to the rudra granti. The other breath regulation exercises never come close when the nadi shodhana is attained using its full potential. Now, you don't have to even do the retention at all. Once the energetic system has fully opened up inside, the narrowing the, the pathway of the nostril is enough yeah, to collect the force towards the middle channel, the Shashumna Nadi. And as you inspire, 
impairs the Ramaganti, impairs the vision country, and then open up the Rudha Granti, the three Grantis. Right, and then here we blend again Pranam, the blending of the Soma, yeah, the, the passive force of God waiting inside. And then the all your our own energy rises up and they blend here. Thus samadhi happens. Right. And of course, um Kachari Mudra. When you allow the tongue to fall backwards. Yeah? Although uh, Kachari Mudra is a tool for us to further yeah, cleanse and irrigate the higher chakras of the Asa system. Yeah, but it's still the Nadi Shadana. Yeah, that's the work of lifting the energy, the unified force of the Kundalini and the Prana to meet God inside the brain, uh, this Soma. And this will cause union to happen. So we can witness yeah, the presence of God, yeah, who we really are yeah, as spiritual individuals. Yes, so this is really beautiful, yes, if you approach it from that uh, perspective. So when, when you say pranam yeah. to a person, yeah, you acknowledge that person's divine nature. All right. Just as when I say namaste to you, I acknowledge that you are a reflection of me and I am within you and you are within me. We are just one. Season. Namaste.